It is a gorgeous day at Epcot today, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to navigate Walt Disney World with IBS and other gastric concerns. You guys ask me about this all the time, and because I don't have a lot of information about it, I've got a very special guest for you who's gonna tell you her top 10 tips. Welcome to Pammy Plus Parks. I am Pammy, your plus size fairy godmother, bringing you all the magic Florida theme parks have to offer plus size people and people with cognitive, sensory, mobility, and accessibility concerns. And today I have a special guest with me. It is Christine from Ivy Winter. Let's poop it out. <laughs> We're definitely gonna poop it out. She's gonna give you her top 10 tips for navigating Walt Disney World with IBS or other gastric concerns. Let's get started and start giving them the scoop on the poop. Okay, so Christine actually has IBS and she can tell you all about all of the different things that she does when she's traveling to and around Disney and how to like really make the most out of your trip, make sure you're relaxed and ready to um, enjoy the day. If you don't know Christine's channel, Ivy Winter, I'm gonna put a link down below in the description and possibly a link boop, boop, over here and um, you'll be able to check her out. She has wonderful Disney content, not just for Walt Disney World, but Disneyland mm -hmm. and most recently, Disneyland Paris. Yes, you cannot miss her channel. Make sure you subscribe. All right, Christine, hit it. Let's get into the poop. <laughs> Talk all about it, okay? <laughs> Let's hear your first tip. Give yourself plenty of time to leave in the morning. I, like many other IBS sufferers, find that mornings are the hardest time for me, but you also put a lot of pressure on yourself because you're at Disney. You wanna get out of the hotel, you wanna get to the parks as fast as possible, but you don't wanna put yourself in a position where you've run out the door, now you're traveling to a park and you're not feeling well. So whether that's 15 minutes or two hours, take all the time you need before you leave the hotel room. If you're traveling with a group, let them go on ahead and let them know that you meet up with them later. It's more important to take care of yourself instead of feeling pressured to keep up with everyone else. If you're traveling with a group, be honest about your need to stop. It can be a little uh, intimidating to tell people about having your stomach issues. I know it was a little stressful for me, but it's going to make things so much easier if the people that you're with know what you're dealing with. So they'll know that you might need to make a pit stop. Sometimes I have to stop almost before every single ride just so I can feel better before I get on the ride. And so they can be more accommodating instead of feeling like, oh, we're stopping every five seconds and I don't know why this is happening, but if you let them know ahead of time, look, I have a medical condition, this is just a necessity for me, makes things easier for everybody. On the flip side, it also gives you an excuse if you need to ditch them for a bit. I've done this before, I've waited in line and decided I'm not gonna be able to make it onto the ride and I need to just go take care of myself. It's not being rude, it's just doing what you need to do to make sure that you're having the best experience possible. And as long as you're honest, nobody in your group is gonna judge you for that. Use a meditation app or some other audio for transportation. So one of the hardest things for me is getting from point A to point B. You can be on a Disney bus, on a boat, or the monorail, and you can feel trapped without access to a bathroom. So what I like to do is pre-download a meditative audio track or even a podcast to listen to to distract me. One of my favorite apps is actually the Calm app, which is built around various meditations and meditative music. And it helps me through some breathing that gets me through from point A to point B. But it could be anything. It could be a podcast. It could be a great playlist that you love. It could even be a mobile video game. Whatever it is that takes your mind off of not feeling well is going to reduce the stress of feeling like you're in a trapped situation. So you can travel to the parks and feel okay. One of the things that you want to do when you get here is review the park maps and know where your bathroom locations are. It'll put you at ease to know what the closest one is. I personally like to know the ones that are right when you arrive, because usually coming off transportation, you know, you might have to go. Um, so look at the map, park maps. You can also look at your app that has it as well. You can filter bathrooms, which is great. Um, and it's just a good way to ease that anxiety of knowing where the next one is. The beauty of Disney is there are bathrooms like 
every 20 feet. It's one of the easiest places to go if you do suffer from some sort of GI illness. That's why I come here all the time. If you find yourself in the parks and you're in pain, this happens a lot. Sometimes it's not necessarily running to the bathroom, you just feel awful, bad stomach ache. You can actually go to first aid, and a lot of people don't know this, First aid is not just for getting aspirin or any sort of medication. They actually have areas in first aid that are dark and you can go to lie down. This is great if you have a stomach ache, even if you have a migraine. Um, and it'll make you feel better to be around trained uh, medical professionals just in case something should happen rather than sitting on a bench in the middle of the park and feeling sick and being surrounded by people which sometimes can heighten the anxiety and make you feel even worse. So my suggestion is find where first aid is. There's one in every single park. They would be more than happy to accommodate you. If you explain the situation, you can rest there, get away from everyone for a little bit until you feel better to take on the rest of the day. Make sure you pack any medications that you might need for the day. This could be Gas-X, Imodium, Alka-Seltzer, Pepto-Bismol, uh, or just a prescription medication. You want to make sure that you have whatever you need that's going to make you feel better, readily accessible. But it also has a bit of a placebo effect. Sometimes me just knowing that I have it with me, I could have a day where everything goes great, but it just makes me feel safe and secure that I know that I have it if something should go wrong. Don't wait in line because you feel pressured to, and don't be afraid to ask a cast member to use the bathroom if you feel it's an emergency. I get it, you've been waiting 45 minutes in line for Soren, and you're almost there, but your stomach's not feeling good, and you don't know what to do, and you feel like you've waited all this time, you just gotta get on the ride. Don't do that. Get off the line, go to the bathroom, take care of yourself. The ride will still be there when you come back. It can be disappointing, but it's better to listen to your body than to push yourself to do something that you probably won't enjoy if you're not feeling well. On the alternative, ask a cast member if you can use a bathroom. I've actually been in this situation before and it was just because I had too much water before getting on a ride and it was at Smuggler's Run and asked a cast member right before boarding if I could use a bathroom and they were really kind and actually led me to a backstage single bathroom to use it. So. I don't want to promise that will happen with every ride, but it doesn't hurt to ask and you'd be surprised how accommodating they can be. They don't want you to wait in line and miss out on the experience either. So chances are they aren't going to tell you to just leave, they'll find a way to accommodate you. Make sure you pack your safe foods. It's great that at Disney, you can bring any food that you want into the park in your bag. Not only does it save you some money, but it also lets you make sure you're eating foods that work for you. So some of my personal favorites is granola bar. I also like packing some bananas. Those are foods that I know will not upset my stomach and if I'm having a hard time finding something to eat or just need that snack in between to hold me over, I know that I can eat these and feel just fine. Alternatively, you can also bring food for your hotel. I often like to pack foods for breakfast. I know that sometimes the foods at the hotel can be a little bit too much dairy, a little bit too salty, and at times that can also be a problem for myself. So remember that you can bring foods inside the parks with no problem, and you can also store whatever you need in the hotels. There are some rooms that might just have fridges, but some places like the cabins at Fort Wilderness have a whole full kitchen so you can make your own meals. So allergy menus are your friend. You might think, well, I don't actually have any allergies. You know, I'm just get an upset stomach from this or that. But being able to see all of the ingredients in the food on the menus is a godsend. It'll make it so much easier to avoid the things that you know are your triggers. Personally, for me, I can't do too much dairy, I can't do onions, and I can't do carrots. If I can go through a menu and say, okay, these egg rolls, for instance, have you know, shredded carrot in them, I know that's not gonna work for me. So always ask, every single restaurant, whether it's quick service or sit-down table service, has an allergy menu. They are more than happy to give it to you and you can take your time and figure out what's gonna work for you so that you can feel good for the rest of your vacation and not worry about what you just need. 
Don't feel that you don't deserve to use the disability pass even if your illness is invisible. I'm guilty of this one myself. For a really long time I told myself, well I don't actually have a disability. I shouldn't be using the disability access card. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. It's meant for anybody with visible or invisible illnesses, disabilities, etc., to use if you feel like waiting in line is difficult for you. And for a lot of people with gastro illnesses, it is. So you can pick this up at guest services. You can register yourself and multiple other people in your party. And what you'll do is you'll go to the ride that you want to ride. You'll show this to the cast member. They will assign you a time to come back, which is usually the same length of time that somebody is waiting. So say the wait is 30 minutes, they might have you come back in 30 minutes and then you and your group will be let immediately onto the ride. So you basically still wait the same wait as everyone else but you get to do it in a more comfortable environment and you don't have to deal with the stress of waiting in line. Don't feel like you don't deserve it just because someone else can't see what you're going through. Because you know what you're going through and you deserve to have just as good a time as anybody else. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this video. I hope that you got lots of amazing tips on how to navigate Walt Disney World with gastric concerns and IBS. Thank you so much, Christine, for joining us. Of course. And make sure you check out her channel here on YouTube. It's Ivy Winter. Again, you'll see the link down below in the description and there'll be a link here at the end of this video. Thanks so much everyone and remember life is a roller coaster. Enjoy the ride.